many communities across the country are expecting their military populations to grow considerably. This offers great opportunities for community economic development. However, the challenges can be daunting in terms of planning and managing the kind of large-scale growth required to accommodate thousands of newcomers. Yet communities have mastered those challenges. We present three of them. Bangor, Washington, whose nearby naval base Kitsap became the home port for the first squadron of Trident missile nuclear submarines. Jefferson County, New York, the site of Fort Drum, which became the new home of the U.S. Army's 10th Mountain Division and Pulaski County, Missouri, where Fort Leonard Wood expanded to accommodate two new Army training schools. How these communities succeeded and the lessons they learned along the way serve as models for communities who may be facing similar opportunities and challenges today. increase in military activity can challenge a community's capacity to absorb new residents. Challenges include mobilizing the community to action, creating new housing and schools, building new infrastructure, and managing new growth wisely. Once it was announced, we knew that we didn't have a lot of time to uh, plan for the community, plan for the growth doesn't get dragged out over 20 years. You know, this happens in a couple of years and it's not going to be delayed. You know, this submarine's going to be coming in a few years. We better be ready for it. Our challenge was to place all of the people coming to Fort Leonard Wood from Fort McClellan in housing that would serve them well and that would end up uh, being a good investment for the area. They were not going to house the additional troops on post. So we were faced with a fairly daunting task of developing a uh, sizable amount of housing, having it in the right price range, having it available at the right time, and having it planned in the right way. No housing development had taken place in this community for a very long time prior to this. And candidly, we had no structure here. There was no, you know, no building community and so forth here to really uh, rely upon. Essentially, the Fort Drum was a new community being built. and. Uh, the issues getting into and off of the facility and, and the community growth that would occur around it. And did we have water, sewer, and road capacity? Can we provide the services like health, like emergency services, like uh, um, social and human services? For the schools, the, their main question was where's the population going to be located? Is it going to be in my district or not? We actually had two challenges that we were aware of at that time. The first one was how to manage the growth that was going to come with the base. The second was how we would have to pay for the infrastructure required uh, from that growth. Fire stations, schools, roads, uh, sewer plants, things like that. In my opinion, this I think was one of the most important reactions to the announcement that the community had. And that was to simply organize as a community, which included the federal, the state level, uh, the county level, the schools, all of the local governments to organize, to come at the problems and, and, and opportunities from a common uh, direction. Dealing with growth challenges requires organizing all the stakeholders in the community. The key job is to motivate the public, assess likely impacts, create a flexible growth plan, and coordinate its implementation in a community where you know the nearest town was Silverdale which had one blinking traffic light um, you know obviously you're going to need new roads and you're going to need new sewers to accommodate the housing and you're going to need new schools to accommodate the kids uh, someone who's not to pay for that it's uh, critical to get the uh, decision makers involved uh, in the process and we had either the mayor or the city administrator representing the different communities we had uh, the presiding county commissioner. Uh, we had the uh, superintendent of the school district. We formed a, a, uh, an organization uh, under New York State Municipal Law, which was an intergovernmental relations council, uh, whose purpose it was to be the single point of contact between the federal, state, and local governments for all issues concerned with the growth of Fort Drum. 
we formed a number of task forces of, uh, of citizens so that everyone who had a concern, an issue, a fear, a problem, some expertise or good idea got to bring it to a forum. And that process also allowed us to get a real buy-in on the decisions that we made. We really made a point of advertising this process and trying to draw in first the local development community. And, uh, and we also solicited assistance from um, other neighboring areas that were more populated, that were more likely to have larger home builders. It's very important to in involve uh, the, the private sector, um, the people who are going to be the builders and developers in the process somehow because those are the guys that are looking at, at understanding the markets that are going on and the growth as much as anybody else. The commanding general of our installation and all of his key leaders were actively involved, again, throughout the process. The media was deeply involved in our process. We had the publisher of the newspaper was a member of the steering council, as was you know, the, the head of the radio and the TV stations. So they were very much a part of the, the problem solving and the solution. You needed to have a central funnel that could speak with one voice and say, here's what the impacts are in the community. Here are the priorities of those impacts. And you know, it's more important that we have a school built here than over there. Developing an effective growth management plan requires a careful study of exactly what is needed and where it should be built. We wanted to save the character of the county and uh, keep the rural nature and we knew if we didn't pay attention to how the uh, growth occurred that we would lose that. We looked at uh, what our needs were, housing and, and uh, infrastructure and public safety. Uh, health care, all those areas that we knew were going to be uh, issues that had to be addressed in terms of growth. The county did not have any planning and zoning. Some of the cities did have spotty building codes, um, you know, enforced here and there. But the Office of Economic Adjustment grant made it possible for the RCGA to contract with a very well-known national consulting group. And they were highly effective in terms of working with the group to pull together a very, um, very highly utilized, concise growth management plan. The growth management plan was critical to our effort. We had a document that was uh, very creditable that we could issue to developers. Uh, they used that document uh, to base their housing development, what price range of homes they needed to construct, the number, be it single family, multifamily. And of course, the commercial development, they wanted to be convinced this was really going to happen. Once it was determined where the housing would go, we developed formulas to try to uh, help the schools as best we could in, in estimating the numbers of students that would, we require. That, of course, had to be translated into both construction as well as uh, faculty uh, and, and, and all aspects of the school. Once you know where you're going to accommodate both population growth and other spin-off growth, commercial growth or whatever, that begins to give you a better handle on not only where your expenditures need to go, but where revenues may come from also. Managing growth requires capital funding arrangements. Both local and other financial interests will depend on a carefully prepared growth management strategy. The local political leaders certainly recognized that we did not have the tax structure uh, that could allow for expanding roads and schools and water systems and sewer systems, all that you needed to accommodate you know, the thousands of people that were going to be coming in in a fairly short period of time. The Office of Economic Adjustment, they were, they were fantastic for us. They really were the liaison with different federal agencies. Um, they got us the planning grants. Um, they were the ones who we work with virtually on a daily basis. I work with the OEA staff. The state of Missouri really stepped up in terms of financing and encouraging, you know, giving us the, the final oomph to kind of move things over the edge, to, to land development where it needed to be in the county and to make things happen really quickly. A developer would come to us with a, with a housing or with a subdivision plan. We would approve that. That would trigger um, the availability of incentives from the state of Missouri. There were also infrastructure grants to help uh, to help place you know the necessary water and sewer lines in the area build roads things of that nature the state uh, came to the forefront and created a, a development authority to work within the area and they had the capacity of, of uh, through bonding and other financing mechanisms actually putting a large part of the infrastructure in the ground for us 
The State Department of Transportation also was very active in the area in making improvements to the state highway system. Here at Fort Leonard Wood, the military wasn't afraid of, of, of going up with their community partners to the state level and uh, not lobby the state, but help explain the importance of local initiatives and whatnot uh, to soldier welfare and, and, and soldier family welfare. Uh, that uniform up there at the state level was very appreciated, it was listened to, and that really helped them to understand the criticality of what we were trying to do down here. We used all types of financing, um, revenue bonds and general obligation bonds of the county, state government. These are thriving communities because they've mastered challenges and maintained a steady focus on what matters most. Providing adequate health care and education facilities, housing, and infrastructure to accommodate expanding community needs. From a population of about 95,000 before the arrival of Trident submarines, Kitsap County, Washington has grown to 225,000. Jefferson County, once among New York's slowest growing counties, became one of the state's fastest growing counties, completing 130 new buildings, 35 miles of new roads, and over 4,000 new family housing units. Today, the development base is so strong that the county is confidently preparing to welcome thousands of additional troops and their families as the Fort Drum's 10th Mountain Division adds a new brigade to its ranks. Pulaski County's population grew with school enrollment increasing 12%. Another part of the story here is how growth related to Fort Leonard Wood has spurred development in nearby communities such as St. Robert, as well as benefiting the entire region. None of these communities had previous experience with large-scale growth. Yet through leadership and organization, the involvement of business, government, and private citizens, careful planning, building partnerships, leveraging resources and fostering creativity they not only met their immediate needs but put in place systems for community development that will enable them to shape their futures for decades to come it's important that you uh, have a strong partnership with your military number one uh, you need to have a good if you form a new organization you need to have a good or an excellent executive director to run that organization someone who's task oriented not someone who shuffles paper and you need to have your municipalities, both local, uh, county, and state government involved. And lastly, then you've got to communicate and communicate and communicate. There needs to be someone taking the lead, and communities must support that person taking the lead. You know, compromise, give up a little bit, because the greater good is uh, what you all should be focused on. That cooperation, that trust, uh, that ability to work together, that mutual respect, it's something that doesn't occur overnight. Uh, it's something that's built, you know, that's built upon, for example, social opportunities uh, between the communities and, and, the, uh, and the military. And we, we have a number of those each year that uh, you know, helps enforce that bonding between the communities and the installation. And it really comes with rolling up the sleeves and getting in together and sharing a common vision common goals and objectives. It was um, kind of a magic moment in time where everyone literally worked together and spoke to their constituencies, brought them along and made it move forward.